Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Your heart's just like down there. It's crazy. It's been a long journey for you. Two years. Two years. No, no, no. I was there. I'm talking. I'm talking. I'm talking. Sounds good. Okay. All right. You know, this has been, like I said, a long journey. I said, right now. You know, what's going through your head right now? What's going in my, through my head is uh, exactly what we've known since day one. Robert Franks was not guilty of any of the charges, which he was at that time arrested, but not even charged. Now we have vindication through the process. It restores my faith in the system. We're just happy that the jury saw it the same way we have all of them. You were congratulated by prosecution. They turned around and said, congratulations. What does that mean? Well, we think we did a good job. We're glad the jury saw it that way as well. The facts were the facts. You know, I uh, I don't want to take any credit because the facts are the facts. And Mr. Branch uh, had unreasonable force used against this person. I'm just glad we were to present it in a format that resonated with the jury. What happens next? Well, uh, we're going to decompress a little bit. You know, it's been uh, a long road to get here. I had I don't have anything scripted for today. You know, we're just happy it went the way that uh, we expected it to go. Go home, you know, hug my son, tell him justice one day. Yeah. For a while, I mean, you guys, you know, I can see it all in your faces. It's just a huge relief. Did you expect this today, or was this a complete surprise? You never know what a jury's going to do, although I had faith, the utmost of faith in, my, in the process. We saw you speaking with the jury briefly after the jury's yeah. Is there anything you can share with us as to what they said to you and how they reached the specific group? It was an emotional experience for everyone involved in this process. The jurors, too, became the conscience of the community in this case. And I just, uh, it, they didn't share as much how they reached their decision as much as, you know, unburning ourselves and the fact that we put a lot of effort into this entire process. And we have to we thank them for their service. Mr. Branch, is there anything you can do? Hold on, one second. We got to see the mic. Let's not right now. I guess not. <laughs> figuring out the situations and stuff like that. Thank you to my attorney, Mark Conan. Thank you to everybody that has supported me since 2015. Coming this long, it's been a journey for me. I've been going through so much, and uh, I can still feel my heart pounding, um, but uh, I really do appreciate everybody. Uh, it's really been a long ways coming, so I, I really do I really do appreciate it. Robert, what were you thinking? when they were about to reach the verdict and they couldn't have gone either way. What was the um, I, I was, I don't know, I was, I just wanted to be done. I, I, I just, that's all I wanted to be done. I was, I was just scared, nervous, shaking. But when they, when I heard the first uh, not guilty, I was like, oh, that's a relief. And then they kept going on and on and on. And I was like, oh, thank God. And everything just came in play and they actually figured out just the jury figure out who well, definitely I'm not guilty of all the charges that Mr. Paul Ward did on that day. So I'm just, I'm just thankful. And when you came out, a lot of people were clapping for you. How did it feel to have so much support? Oh, that felt great. That felt great and amazing. Now after this, I'm going to go home and hug my daughter. So, How old your daughter? She's one. You said it's been a two-year journey, so does this moment seem surreal to you? Yes, it does. It, 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 it truly does. It, it just... Now I can go ahead and just probably educate young young uh, kids on what to do in a process and dealing with the police. A lot of police out there are actually pretty good. There's some of that are bad, that they don't really need to be working, they need to be fired. But there are actually a lot of cops out there that are actually doing a lot of good things. Specifically for you, is there something that you've been waiting to say until after this was all done to sort of set the record straight in your own words? No, not really. It just, you know... It, that's pretty much nothing. The tape speaks for itself. Yeah, the tape, yeah, the tape speaks for itself. On what he did that day. Now, you know, he's retired. I wish they fired him, but it happens. So, what are your thoughts towards him? Uh, I don't know. Just, uh, it seems to he seems like a good person, but that day, it was. He should have took it to a different level on what he should have did, probably following his procedures and stuff like that. But uh, like, he seems like a, a really good guy, but other than that day, it, he should have took it to a whole different level. So, Will you do anything differently moving forward having gone through this experience? Uh, that day, I stayed in the house and I waited until later on later on that night. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, no, from now on. In the future. Uh, in the future, keep doing the same thing, videotaping. If it, it, uh, a counter police officer, maybe that officer could be a good cop, you never know. Just 
videotape everything, you know, so. Have you ever considered what would have happened had you not had yourself Oh, I'll probably be in jail right now. If it wasn't for that video, I, I'll probably be locked up right now because if they be taking his testimony against mine. So, if I didn't have that video, you would, I wouldn't be talking to you right now. Um, unfortunately, no. Uh, his father's in Virginia and his mother got called in on emergency work this morning. Um, my, my dad works for the DEA. So. Have, have you talked to them? Yeah, they constantly calling me. See what's going on, and I'm blowing up my phone. I'm like, oh, but yeah. I talked to your mom last night, but she was so emotional. Yeah, and if she was here right now, she would definitely be really emotional. Um, this guy right here, he's the one that really been supporting me. If you want to talk to you know, these two right here, so man, they be catching up on me. So. <laughs> Uh, I don't want to break it. Uh, okay. oh, guys, I mean, maybe we're good to go. Yeah. Uh, all right. We're good. We're good. Yeah. We're good. We're good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. We're Thanks. good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Do you have in there? You're positive. Okay. Yeah. The truth of the is I'm not there. I think what it was to them, I think they're the best judges. Uh, also, uh, the kids are going to come down. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Stop crying. Cases are very, very difficult to make sure you both sides. I'll get back to as far as uh, the nature of the evidence. And again, in this case, the jury paid close attention, took their time in deliberations. The jury was out for a day and a half of deliberations. So, you know, we certainly appreciate their efforts, even if we respectfully disagree with the results. Robert Grant, you said that the boy's not for that video. He felt that this would have gone completely to that direction. I think it was a very, I think it was a very important piece of evidence for both sides in their evaluation of the case, and certainly it was for the jury uh, as well. So we you know we live in an age now where we have cell phones and uh, people are recording, as I'm being recorded right now, uh, and people go and see incidents taking place, and even if they're not involved in the incident, what do we always see happening right now, right? Everybody goes to their phone. Sometimes on a personal level, I wish people would like call 911 or <laughs> somehow help out people instead of just like videoing things. But this is our new reality. It'll be the reality for you know the rest of our, our lives where when things are happening in some way, shape, or form, it'll be surveillance cameras or cell phones. There's a greater chance of documenting stuff. Okay. What's the takeaway here for people watching at home who may encounter an off-duty police officer? Well, it's interesting that you that you asked the question the way that you did, and that's one of my great concerns in this case. Okay, from the very beginning, from the very very beginning, okay, uh, the retired detective Bork was on duty. He wasn't off duty. He certainly was playing clothes. Okay, my advice I can give to anyone is just obey the law. Okay, be respectful in your interactions with individuals. If you have a concern as to how a contact is proceeding. Understand that, okay? Obey lawful instructions. Make sure uh, officers are on scene and handle it appropriately in that fashion. But I don't think people necessarily understand that A, Ward was on duty, okay? That's all the evidence that came out in the trial that he was on duty. He was coming back actually from an interview on all those child abuse cases. But whether you're on duty or off duty, plain clothes or uniform, law enforcement officers still have full police powers. So, so what, what that that's important. So why did this go the way it did, in your opinion? As far as the way it did, I can't. I want to certainly speculate for Mr. Mr. Branch as far as his side of the interaction. Mr. Uh, Mr. Ward testified and, as to uh, the procession of events, the driving that he witnessed, the decisions he made in contacting Mr. Branch. And remember, you have the video, okay, which you've already spoken about. But what's interesting is. I don't know if there's the right word, but we still don't have the, any video or documentation of anything that preceded that portion of the incident. We certainly do have that. So do you think that that piece of video and that aspect worked against you in this case? I think that people who aren't necessarily educated on uh, use of force, law, of the law, okay, of uh, use of force, arrest power, things like that. If you didn't know anything about the case, if you didn't know anything about the evidence, if you weren't sitting in that courtroom every every day, if you only got your information from social media, various social media platforms where people have their own biased motivations for what they put 
things out or how they frame it, and you just saw that video, and just those snippets of it, I can understand somebody seeing that for the first time going, oh, that's concerning. You know, what's going on there? Okay, I totally understand that. That's why it's important, that's why we have juries, to make sure that they get as much of the story as we can to let them make a full, educated decision based upon all the evidence and the law. And good thing the jury got it right. Have, have you spoken to Officer Ward? He's retired. He's not. Um, oh, I told you I'd spend some time with you, but I need to contact him. Well, I'm going to speak to him as soon as I'm done with you. So, I haven't contacted him yet, so okay. I can't speak to him. Okay? I guess I'm just sure I understand because uh, I'm picking this up and we're going to go read all the past articles and try to, you know, I wasn't in there every day like you were, no, right? No. <laughs> yes. Um, I mean, or, other, what, or other people or other people who came by what, once in a while. I mean, there's a, at some point in this, there was a fine line of discerning something. And what, what, what do you mean? Well, in terms of, for the, for the jury to look at, was he justified to do that restraint? Was he not? Whatever. I mean, where, where in your mind was that? Because the video speaks for itself on a certain level. You, you and the uh, defense will agree on a lot of stuff, but sure. you didn't agree, and that came, it came down to the part where you didn't agree. And I'm just that's the part I'm focusing on on that. Like, where, what was the line that the jury had to? Are you asking me to summarize, if I can, for you the main issues as to what was presented to the jury? It's kind of I think so. It? Yeah. I mean, if it, if it was if here's, it's that simple. Okay. Here's the I'll do the people's version. I think I've good understanding what the defense version is. People's version is that an on-duty peace officer in plain clothes saw reckless driving that was taking place. He couldn't get the license plate of the vehicle. He saw what the vehicle direction he was going. He was heading the same direction. He got off on the same exit. Eventually contacted that individual. Saw the tactical, saw the tactical vest. Contacted the individual. License and registration. Demanded it twice. Badged him twice. None of that is, of course, on the video. Okay. And then you have the interactions that take place uh, on the video, expressing concern about the potential safety concerns of the tactical vest. Okay. And while law enforcement officer's position was, I had safety concerns about the tactical vest. I'm telling him he's being contained. I'm pulling out his arm. He turns away from me as he's filming himself. I have a significant safety concern at that time. Okay. And then everything else happens in the video happens. Okay. Defense argument in the case was not reckless driving. Somebody who got upset about their car almost being hit, okay, followed, intentionally followed, intentionally did not radio in, intentionally contacted him at the at the location, being upset, being angry, and basically then escalated the situation by doing so. I think that would be the defense argument. So it really comes down to the analysis, okay, was the contact, first of all, lawful? Okay. And secondly, even if the contact was lawful, okay, did Detective Ward use reasonable force in his interaction with Mr. Branch to subdue Mr. Branch? Okay? And clearly the jury has spoken on those issues. All right? That's great. Thank you. Well, sure. All right. Thank you. Thank you guys.